We're going to look at several passages. First of all, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, please. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. Apparently, a lot of people have an infatuation with the book of Enoch when they're talking about end times. The Bible says, In the last days there shall be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So in these last days we are to be aware of what's going on and how the devil's moving so that we don't be ignorant and fall prey. But a lot of people who get into these end time events, they really have an infatuation with the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch actually is a heretical book, you're going to find out. It's one of those Gospels that Gnostics really use. We're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and then verse 5. Now, the reason why is this, is that I don't know how many people out there were actually reading the book of Enoch and reading the Bible at the same time, but it's very obvious that a lot of the verses were taken when the Bible was already completed. And then they were like copycatting just like Joseph Smith did and even Muhammad did with his Quran. So it's pretty obvious. You'll see, I saw Revelation chapter 1 there. I see verses from Isaiah mentioned over there, but they pretend like it never existed. But we're going to see why that the verses is Gnosticism, and it is mysticism, it is heresy. So the first thing is Enoch chapter 40, verses 1 through 10. This passage shows that there is a person that's interceding, and it's not Jesus Christ. Now, some people, they think that I misquoted this verse. I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the whole verse here and try to read it in context. After that, I saw thousands of thousands and ten thousands times ten thousand. I saw a multitude beyond number and reckoning who stood before the Lord of Spirits. And on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits, I saw four presences different from those that slept, sleep not. And I learnt their names, for the angel that went with me made known to me their names and showed me all the hidden things. Okay, so basically there are four different angels, and it's going to discuss what these four angels are. I heard the voices of those four presences as they uttered praises before the Lord of glory. The first voice, so here's the first angel, blesses the Lord of spirits forever and ever. And the second voice, second angel, I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of spirits. And the third voice, okay, now this is the third angel here. And the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of Spirits. So this third angel is doing the intercession for the saints. Now, if I were to ask you who does interceding for the saints, every basic Christian knows who that is. It is Jesus Christ. He is not given to any other. Let's also keep reading here. And I heard the fourth voice fending off this, fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord. Oh, Satans. Interesting. <laughs> of spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. Now, as we jump to verse 9, he's going to give the names of these four angels. The first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering, and the second who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men is Raphael. And the third who is set over all the powers is Gabriel, and the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life is named Phanuel. So you see this blatant heresy right here. It's very obvious right here that what they believe is that there are angels who do intercession as well as in angels who do what? The repentance unto eternal life. Now, if you study the Gnostics, you got to realize this, and Paul even warned about this. He warned at the book of Colossians, there are those who put up a worshiping of angels, who set on a pedestal angels. He warned about them at Colossians. Because these Gnostics existed during the times of the early Christians. 
their heresy was already spreading out. They were writing false books of the Bible that time as well. Paul even knew that there were false books going out. He said at the book of first, uh, at the book of First Corinthians that basically there are those who corrupt the Word of God. He mentions at that Second Thessalonians chapter two that this is my writing, so don't be fearful. It's not some other person's writing. So you, even liberal schools. I attended a Bible class at Berkeley. The professor even mentioned there were false books of the Bible during that time. So this should be very obvious. You can't just take it by faith that this is the right book. Now a lot of people, they'll, be they'll believe this is the right book because Enoch is quoting from the book of Jude. You'll notice if you know your Bible, Jude says Enoch prophesied and he prophesied about these angels coming down. So because Jude quoted that, they assume that the book of Enoch is inspired. But the easy answer to that is this. If you look at the book of Enoch, it was copying from Revelation, Isaiah, other books of the Bible. How do you not know it was copycatting from Jude as well? See, that's something that they got to think about. But people out there, I wonder if you really read the book of Enoch or you're watching something on YouTube or something on the internet. See, that's something to think about. Are you actually studying and reading or watching stuff and think that you know the truth as a result? See, so that's something important to think about. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, For there is one God and one what? Mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There's no other person that's mediating. There's no other person who's doing the interceding, especially repentance unto eternal life. It's only Jesus Christ. Here's another one. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. Verse 15. Enoch says at chapter 5, okay, here are the verses. So in Enoch chapter 5, verse 7c as well as 6i to 6j. It teaches that sinners are cursed with no salvation. Well, that's a problem. What did Paul say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners, right? Don't sinners, aren't sinners the one that Jesus sought to save? I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yes, but Enoch says right here, And for you, the godless, there shall be a curse. What's the curse on the godless? And for all of you sinners, there shall be no salvation, but on you all shall abide a curse. So that's its teaching. That's heresy. What did 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 say? It says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom what? I am chief. Paul is the worst of sinners. Are we saying that he received absolutely no salvation as a result? Here's another one. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2, 5 again. This adoration of angels is really obvious when you read Enoch. It's really obvious. It teaches once more about angels doing the intercession. Doing the work of intercession for saints. Here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels and their resting places with the holy. And they petitioned and interceded and prayed for the children of men. And righteousness flowed before them as water. See, they're taking, they're putting angels in the position where Christ is. Christ is the one that does the intercession. Christ is the one that told Peter, I'm the one that's praying for you. See, that book of Enoch should be avoided at all costs because they're really raising up this worship of angels. If not worshiping, a high exaltation. Here's another one. Go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Same book, same chapter. We're going to look at verse 1, though. All right, this is what they teach. They teach that saints up in heaven... Okay, this is Mormonism right here. They teach that saints up in heaven, they're going to come down on the earth and marry. So when we die and we go to heaven, guess what? We're going to make marriages. That is heresy. That's what Muhammad teaches about heaven. That's what Mormonism teaches. And guess what? 
The Bible shows these aren't good guys who go down to the earth and intermingle. Yeah. It's what? It's, it's the bad guys, fallen angels. Why would you mingle up the righteous with the wicked here? You call that book as part of your Bible then? Here's another one. Enoch chapter 39 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven, and their seed will become one with the children of men. And in those days Enoch received books of zeal and wrath and books of disquiet and expulsion. That is heresy. Matthew chapter 22 verse 30, what did it say about us when we die and we go to heaven? Matthew 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. If you read the context all the way from verses 24, the Pharisees saying, whose wife, uh, whose husband will she be? And then what Jesus said at the end is, they're not given in marriage when they go up to heaven. Amen. Here's another one. Let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. This book is not a book of, that's relevant in your Bible. It's definitely, it definitely should be out. It definitely should be out. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 20. The next one is Enoch chapter 51, verses 1 through 2. Enoch chapter 51, verses 1 through 2. So what does this part read? Well, it teaches right here in Enoch chapter 51, verses 1 through 2. <laughs> Let's read it. In those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it. Okay, so the earth is going to give up the dead, and Sheol also shall give back that which it has received, and hell shall give back that which it owes. So Sheol, hell, and the earth, they're all going to give up their dead. They're going to give it back. Why? And he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. For the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved. That is heresy. So they're teaching you that there are souls, the dead, who are down in hell, who have a chance that they can get saved. You know what that is? That's Seventh-day Adventism right there. Seventh-day Adventism in their final judgment, they keep changing doctrine, so I'm not really sure how much they believe it now. But they believe that they do not believe in a soul burning in the lake of fire for all eternity. They also teach, Ellen G. White herself taught, that there's going to be the scapegoat at the final judgment, which is Satan, and all sins are landed upon him. So the sins do not land upon the dead so that they burn in hell for eternity. But this contradicts Revelation chapter 20. So it's the same passage about the judgment, right? So you know, see a lot of copycatting, but they're making their own additions what they want to teach. So we're going to look at Revelation chapter 20. This is, this is the reading that they're trying to read right here. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, notice, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Notice what happens to them as a result when these dead are delivered from hell. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was what? Yes. Cast into the lake of fire. They're not saved. They're not saved. You saved Christians are not going to this judgment, you got to understand. You saved Christians are going to the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All right, let's look at another one. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Didn't you know Jesus did not receive his name until much, much later? Jesus was not named at all. God was not named at all for eternity until later on. Look at John chapter 1. All right, Enoch chapter 48. This is heresy right here. 
they teach right here in Enoch chapter 48, verse 1 through 3 and verse 6, that the Son of God never had a name. Son of God never had a name until God named him later on. But that's not true. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verses 1 and onward, In the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, with, and the Word was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. You'll notice right here, He is eternity, always is. But you'll notice right here, that's not what they teach here. Chapter 48, verse 1 through 3 and 6. And around it were many fountains of wisdom, and all the thirsty drank of them, and were filled with wisdom, and their dwellings were with the righteous and holy and elect. And at that hour, that Son of Man, so that title, Son of Man, that Jesus had was never shown at the Old Testament, you got to realize. Until what? Until after the New Testament. You see this? This shows this book of Enoch is copycatting after the Bible's completed. There's no doubt. But let's keep reading right here. That hour, the Son of Man, at that hour, that Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits, and His name before the head of days. Yea, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, His name was named before the Lord of Spirits. And for this re reason hath He been chosen and hidden before Him, before the creation of the world, and forevermore. No, that's not true. Jesus Christ, He said what? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He always is. He always had His name ever since, for eternity. It's not like till later on that He received His name. You know why? Because if you study these Gnostics, they downplay the deity of Jesus Christ, equating Him with these angels. They're exalting angels, and they're degrading Jesus Christ to an equal level. I don't know if you really read the book of Enoch. You should read it. It really shows that. Here's something hilarious. I, I never thought that this book would actually have something hilarious. You should read some of the apocryphal books. Remember our Bible study? I showed you some of the comedy that's in the apocryphal books. It's just hilarious. But Enoch shows you a ridiculous comedy right here. Noah had laser beam eyes. <laughs> Noah had laser beam eyes. You're exaggerating, Pastor. No, I'm not exaggerating, all right? He had laser beam eyes that his father ran out of the house. And the father had to go all the way to seek out Enoch and to try to find out what is going on right here. All right. Look at chapter 106, verse 2 through 3 on Enoch, if you want to check it out right here. His body, so when Noah was born, they're describing him in this way. His body was white as snow, and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head, and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. Uh, Pastor, you're exaggerating right here. Uh, let's keep reading, okay? Re keep reading down to verse 4 through 6. I'm not exaggerating. His, when he opened his eyes, you know, this laser came out, and it just shone up the whole house. This so, uh, let me keep reading right here. <laughs> it's a literal description. It's not metaphorical. It's literal, okay? And his father, Lamech, was afraid of him, and fled, and came to his father, Methuselah. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike man, and resembling the sons of God of heaven. So you notice this exaltation of angels again? This is so obviously Gnostic. And his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. And it seems to me he is not sprung from me, but from angels. So you see, this is literal. He shut off all this stuff out of his eyes. That shot up the whole house like the sun, and then they were freaking out. <laughs> So you notice right here that this book is definitely heresy. It should not be part of your Bible. So the, what are the right books? That book you got in your hand, the King James Bible. Doesn't need anything more or less. This one is plain Gnostic heresy right here. 